whisper quietly It helps her sleep It seems It's the quilt my mama gave to me The day I turned 16 Hi there! I have something new that I'm gonna try um, it's for the next step in our quilting. I haven't used this product before, but I hope it works as good as it said it does. Um, this is a set of pins. Um, this may be backwards for you. <laughs> Actually, I think it is. But it's heat erase marking pins. And basically what that means is it's a pen that I can write on the fabric with, but it will disappear whenever I heat it. So we're gonna do a little bit of a test. So, I'm going to take one of the pins. I think I'll try the blue one. So, it's just a pin. And I'm going to write on some of the salvage of one of the fabrics that we had. So, let's see. Make a line. See the line? Okay. And when I iron over this with the hot iron, it's supposed to make it disappear, so let's see. And look at that. It's exactly what I wanted it to do. Because we're gonna be drawing lines on our quilt top and we don't want it to mess up the quilt top. So whenever we finish drawing the lines and then I sew over the lines, which is gonna be quilting it, and making the accent lines to make it look like sun shining around the cross. When I'm finished, I'll iron it and those lines will disappear. So let's give it a try. Hi, we're back with our completed um, quilt top here. I'm gonna take it off of the wall here and we're gonna use those heat erase pens to draw some lines. What I'm gonna do is draw lines from the center out to the border. I'm gonna do that about every half inch, or excuse me, one inch. I think it'd be better with one inch. So we're gonna do it like every one inch, and it's gonna look like rays of sun coming out. Once we get that done and drawn all the way around, we're actually gonna start the quilting process of it, and when we so on those lines, that's the actual quilting that we're going to do. But first of all, we have to draw the lines. So let's get started. Okay, I've taken it off the wall and it's now here on my mat. And I'm actually going to start drawing the lines that I was telling you about with my handy dandy little disappearing ink pen. So, right here on the instructions, you can see red lines and blue lines. What they're doing is saying start from the middle of your um, star and go out all the way to the blue border. So we're gonna do them about an inch apart. We're gonna start in the middle, but flare them out about an inch to an inch and a half apart. And once we get them all drawn, I'll come. we'll come back together and we'll, um, show you how to do the sandwich, which will actually do, be doing the quilting and those lines that we drew, we're gonna sew on top of those and that's gonna do the quilting. So right here is the center star. And all up through here, there are points. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start from the center of that star and we're gonna draw a line all the way to the blue out here to the point. And then I'm gonna move this over about an inch, keeping it in the middle, and draw it again. What's it, and I'm gonna do that all the way around the um, cross, and it's gonna look like radiating um, sunlight from around the cross. So I'm gonna get started. I'll draw the first line. Remember, this is disappearing ink. It's not regular ink. So once you heat it up 
the ink will disappear. So I've got my ruler here that I'm putting this on the corner and I've just got it going out through the corner here so there, that way I know it's going right down the middle of the star. And I'm gonna start right here in the middle and I'm just gonna draw a line. Doesn't have to be very hard, just enough so you can see it. I'm going all the way out to the outer border. It's very faint, but we're gonna sew on that. And then when we get it all done and I iron it up, that line will be gone. So let's get our lines drawn and then we'll start our quilting. Okay, we're back on this windy, rainy day. Um, getting ready to sandwich my quilt using my quilting basting spray. Again, the reason that I'm doing it outside is because when it's a spray, it kind of goes everywhere and I don't want it to get all over everything in the room. So I've got a piece of cardboard here on the table. I have my um, backing face down and we're going to put our binding on, I'm not binding, I'm sorry, our batting in, which is the middle of the quilt, but I'm going to spray this first. Doesn't need a lot of spray. Sticks really well. Um, okay, I have my batting folded in half and then in half again. So I'm going to put it about about midway and then I'm going to lay it out. It may be a little bit bigger than the, um, the backing, which is fine. I'm going to lay it out. And then I'm going to start working it out from the middle to the end. Keeping all of the lumps and bumps away. I think I've got it turned the wrong way, so we can fix that real fast. Just fold it back up. I'm gonna go this way. Kinda of fighting the wind today. And then I'll just keep that working that out and make sure there's no bumps on the other side and we'll be good. Then we'll put the top on the same way. I'll be back. Okay, we're gonna do our uh, top now. It's giving me a little trouble because, I'll, because it's damp and wet out here, so we're gonna do it in sections. So, I got it laid out here. Just gonna pull this up. Pat it down, going outward, so we can get all of the wrinkles out. Okay, I'm lift this up, and I did about a third, so I'm going to go up that far. Another third. See my cardboard's getting wet over there, so. I'm kind of doing it in a hurry to get it inside. But the dampness doesn't help it stick in the I'm 
spray the last third. Like I said, this is sticky, so it gets kind of everywhere because it's spray. So it doesn't have to be perfect just as long as, you know, the three pieces are there. Because when I quilt it, it's going to hold it down better. I think we're done. We're going to take this inside now, lay it out on the table, and see what it looks like. So here we are back inside. Um, just laid it out. It is a little damp because it was raining out there coming through the screen. Um, just make sure it's kind of flat in all your areas. Top looks pretty good, but let's see what the bottom looks like. Okay, overall it looks pretty good. Um, I might work some of it out this way. And I think it's just because I was working awkwardly on that cardboard and trying to get it done because of the rain. Let me go over that side. To see this is very forgiving so you can pull it up and readjust whatever you need to. There's one spot here that doesn't want to work. Somebody's using a knife, so that's good. So. I think it's the batting right there that's wanting to bunch up. Okay, looks pretty good. So we're going to start our quilting. I am going to do it still on the old machine because um, I want you to see that it doesn't have to be a brand new machine for you to to do these projects with. You can use an old machine or a new machine. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is here where I've got the uh, hearts drawn. haven't decided what I'm going to do down this way, but then I've got the rays out here. Um, and we'll see what it looks like when we get done. The last thing we'll do when we get it all quilted is to do the binding, but I'll show you how to do that when we get to it. So come on back. We're almost done. Okay, we're getting ready to start doing the actual quilting on the um, on the quilt now. I'm gonna bring it over. I'm gonna fold it up just a little bit. And that's just for maneuverability. There's not much space on this neck right here, so you just have to deal with that. Um, there's nothing you can do about that with um, your machine. It is what it is. I have lowered my feed dogs so that I don't have anything feeding it. My hands are what's gonna feed it. Um, I've got a light here, so hopefully it's not gonna fool the camera too much. I've got special quilting gloves 
and that's just to help me uh, be able to hold the quilt and move it. You could also use gardening gloves. They're almost exactly the same thing. It's just little, little dots right here that helps grip. So let's turn on this. I don't think we have any power, so give me a second. Okay, we have power again. Um, I did change a couple of things. I did put the feed dogs back up because I think on this one it will work better. Um, and I put the um, presser foot back on. So we've got it set up just like we do normally sewing. So I'm just gonna go around um, these hearts and I'll sh let you see what we're doing. You don't have to go right on top of the marks, uh, just fairly close. And the more you do it, the, the easier it gets. Uh, it, it's going to go slow at first. Um, so you just do what you need to do to keep your pattern going. Just make sure you don't have anything underneath it. If you need to put your needle down, lift your presser foot to pivot, that's fine. You may have to do that a lot. So you just keep going and do your best and it'll be fine. biggest problem you'll see is the fact that you don't have much space in here.
Okay, I'm just going to keep on doing this until we get to the end and we'll come back uh, when I'm finished. Here we are with our finished quilt. This is what the to finished quilt is going to look like. There were some mistakes done at the end, but um, I love the way it turned out anyway, with God's help, <laughs> which is the whole reason for this class anyway. Um, I didn't do a traditional um, ending to it. I took what the backing fabric and I just folded it over, turned in a seam and sewed it down instead of doing the traditional binding. But I think it turned out really well. So this is what the total or the finished quilt looks like. Um, we're going to be making it in the classroom and I hope you enjoyed the process while you're doing your own um, and just enjoying each other and letting God talk to us while we're working on the, um, the quilt itself and learning to um, be peace together with your friendships. And I want to thank you for allowing me to help you in this process. And uh, I just want to say I love you just like God does. Have a great day. Whisper quietly, it helps her sleep. It seems it's the quilt my mama gave to me the day I turned sixteen.